Metal Gear Solid 1 for the PlayStation 1 is one of my favorite games of all time. You know it's going to be good as soon as you start it up, because you can see it's made by Konami. Now Konami is responsible for a lot of other amazing games, including Castlevania. As soon as you try to play the game, you'll probably get killed pretty quick, because you'll probably think it's a standard uh, running gun shooter. You're just supposed to go around killing the guards. But of course, if you've played Metal Gear, or Metal Gear 2, or any of the other Metal Gear Solid games, you'll know that's just now you play Metal Gear Solid. If you get into a gunfight, you'll probably get your ass kicked. So the gameplay was strange, but it was done so well that it became a revolution. This game pretty much set the standard for every stealth game that would follow. People were hyping up this game, mostly PlayStation fanboys, because it was a franchise that had been on Nintendo before, and of course Nintendo was dominant in the game market for a long time. So here was a franchise, uh, along with Final Fantasy, that was jumping from Nintendo to being exclusive to PlayStation. So people really hyped it up. Especially when the demo got out there, because people loved the demo. And people who had played the games before and were fans were really excited that there'd be another game. Especially making use of the, at the time, next-gen technology. The graphics for their time were really good. Because it was a 3D game that actually worked. It's easy to forget, now that all games are 3D pretty much, it's easy to forget how few good 3D games were around uh, for a console, especially when Metal Gear Solid came out. So, of course now the talk is about real 3D, but when I talk about 3D, you know what I mean. Not like a 2D side-scroller anymore. The game was also known for, uh, the series was already known for having a mature storyline. And a storyline that is also complex as hell. I mean, I think of myself as a relatively smart guy, but when I play through this game, there are scenes where I'm just lost in what's going on. But there's a deep message behind this story. And really, that makes the plot just incredibly deep for a game back then. I mean, this wasn't... Metal Gear. You know, I mean, this was at a time when a lot of games were still just side-scrollers without too much of a story. Games were beginning to make a transition from just being for kids having a more mature, in-depth story. But this game had an incredible story, especially for a console game. Because while there were a lot of more mature games on the PC, consoles hadn't seen nearly as many mature games. And this game really set the standard for how to tell a deep story. Many people had trouble understanding parts of it, but the basic story was relatively easy to understand. You're a special agent, you go in there, and you have to destroy the super weapon. But there are so many little twists and turns, and they're just so ingenious, that the plot really sews itself into your memory. And heck, it's a plot that took four games to wrap up. It's that complicated. Not to mention spin-offs on the PSP, and then the, now the PSP Go soon. Also remember, this is one of the first games, well I won't say the first games, but this was an early game on a CD. You did have the Sega CD before, but that didn't do too well. This was at the time when CD games were really taking over and making Nintendo look really bad. And one big thing about CDs was, of course, music CDs. But the music quality for Metal Gear Solid was amazing. If you go on YouTube, you can still find tons of songs from Metal Gear Solid 1 that people still listen to. Because the plot was so good, people just keep coming back to it. So it had, at the time, really good graphics, amazing sound quality, and sound quality that holds up pretty well even to this day. At the end, there's a little vehicle section that's really well made. And uh, the sound of the vehicle is actually surprisingly good. You really have trouble telling apart some of the sounds uh, back then from the sounds that you hear in games today. Now, the one shortfall of the graphics overall presentation, which would include the sound, one shortfall in the graphics is the character models. I mean, really, Snake doesn't have a face. I mean, that's kind of bad. But, I mean, you gotta remember, games back then, 3D games, none of them looked that great. So really, if you ignore the character models, it's a pretty amazing looking game. 
and of course there's so many elements to the gameplay which just blew people away. Like the fact that soldiers can follow your footprints, they can hear you from really far away. Almost too far away. But they're, they're genetically enhanced soldiers, so it makes sense. And they have a line of sight. And they're not complete pushovers, basically. I mean, if you think about it, like going back to Mario, Super Mario Brothers. I mean, most of the enemies there, you just jump on them in one hit and they're dead. They're all kind of pushovers. And Metal Gear Solid, not quite. Just talking about the enemies, that brings me to the boss fights. I mean, you know, you have bosses like Psycho Mantis, Metal Gear Rex at the end, Liquid, uh, Revolver Ocelot. I mean, you have just so many enemies. And what's awesome about the enemies in this game is the story, the music, makes it so much more emotional than it would be in past games. In past games, it's like, oh yeah, you beat the boss, woohoo, and then you move on. In Metal Gear Solid, when you beat Sniper Wolf, you but actually feel really sad day after day. and especially Otacon. Really but, you know, I know the people out there who have not played the game, even though it's like, but what, 11 or 12 years old now, you really should have played the game. But I'm kind of keeping in mind that some people haven't. Each but when you beat Sniper Wolf, up, you feel really sad for her. And, find a few more and there's a really good music playing at the time. Now, when I say really good music, I don't mean like the type of music it's that most of us would listen to. But it works really well for the mood that's being set. Heck, the boss fights in Metal Gear Solid 1 were so epic that they were actually copied from in many other games. Including, of course, Metal Gear Solid 2 to an extent, and especially Metal Gear Solid 4.